thank you as we have brought our sacrifice of praise to you. Lord, as some of us have came today and we have just said, we've stepped out and we've said, Lord, whatever you need to do in us, whatever, Lord, we're taking that step of faith and we're trusting you. We're trusting, Lord, that you're you're not only walking next to us, but you're carrying us. Oh God, thank you, Lord, that um, when we do take that first step, Father, that you have already met us. And Father, I just pray your blessing, Father, on, on that, on that obedience. Father, just shower us with your love and just shower us with your, your peace and your comfort. God, we need you so much. Lord, forgive us forever, thinking for a second that we could even take a breath without you. Father, we love you. We love you. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name. Well, um, go ahead and open your Bibles back up to 2 Timothy uh, 2, verse 22. And as you're doing that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray for us, and we'll get started this morning. Heavenly Father, just thank you once again for, God, just your love and your mercy. And God, your grace. We thank you that it's been poured out for us, and God, you, you showered it on us. God, without you, there's absolutely no way we could stand and face the trials that come our way. Father, we know it's your word that strengthens us. We know it's your word that gives us endurance. So, Father, I, I pray this morning that your word goes forth. Holy Spirit, that you just take control of me and everything that I, I think I'm needing to say. You just take control of Father, I ask that our hearts are just fertile soil to receive your word so it can take root in our life and we can grow up to please you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22. It's where, you know, I, we've been camped out just a, a while, but and this, this verse here has a lot of, lot of meat to it, and we need to, we need to go down into it and get everything out of it that we, we can get out of it because it's going to help us grow. Amen. Amen. It says, flee the evil desires of, you, of your youth and pursue, pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace along with those who call on the, on the Lord out of a pure heart. Now, we've already talked about, you know, what it means to, to pursue righteousness, how to flee our youthful desires, and um, going after righteousness, seeking God's face, seeking God, and, and, and now we're on faith. And last week we talked about what faith was. You know, and what the basic understanding of what faith is, and not only that, how, how does our faith increase? But like last week, I said there, there's something about our faith that's different, all right? We're going to make a stand on our faith, and, and our faith, we all have to be ground, grounded upon what we believe in. We know the Bible talks about this over and over and over and over and over again. It says in the latter days, in the last days, and when the, the Bible w was being written, uh, Peter and, and Paul and all of them, they were in the last days. The last days was when Christ went back up to heaven until he returned. It was called the last days, and if it was the last days for them, it's the last days for us. 
And I think we're a little bit closer to the last days than what we have ever been. And it says in the last days, what's going to happen? There's going to be people that are coming around, and they're going to be preaching all kinds of um, stuff, false doctrine. They're going to use the Bible, and they're going to take it, and they're going to twist it, and they're going to make people believe what they want to believe. And you know what? It, it's happening on a wide scale here in America. You know, there, there, there's people that take the truth, and they twist it, and we've talked about, you know, both types of, of people. And, uh, guys, we've got to be... We got to be sure of what we're grounded in. It's not enough just to have faith. You know what? We can put our faith in a lot of different things, but there's only one thing that will that has and will continue to withstand the test of time, and that's the Word of God and His Holy Spirit that's alive and well with inside of us. And if we don't get that, then we're missing it. If we don't get His Word, we don't get His Spirit, we're missing it. If we don't know what we're grounded on, then we're just going to be uh, shooting in the dark. And so this morning, uh, there, there's four things that I want to go over that we have to be grounded on in our faith, that th these are must-have issues, okay? There, there's no other ways about them. There's been a lot of people in a lot of churches that have, have split and went different ways over different doctrines, but these four things must stay secure in the foundation of every Christian. If we're going to say we're a Christian, we, we're going to say that we're following what God's Word tells us, then we've got to be sure of at least these four things. And I believe if we, if we have faith, and we know what faith is, it's, 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 that, it's that belief, right, in something, and we put our trust in it. If we, we have these four things in our life, then, guys, we won't go wrong, but we can't stray from these four things. you got to understand that. We can't stray. We can't add to. We can't take away. We can't do certain things. We've got to stay grounded upon these four things, and, and what are they? So if we're going to pursue faith, we're going after faith, we got to know what we're grounded in. You know, I asked myself this question this morning about, you know, a lot of people when they, they think about faith, they think, well, does it really matter? Does it really matter what I believe? Or is there this some big universal God that's out there and you know, he, he's made provisions for each and every one. You know, God is so loving that, you know, surely not all these different people that are, you know, worshiping these other gods are wrong. You know, maybe God has just manifested himself in different ways. And, you know, like the little fat man Buddha, you know, maybe he's manifested himself in that way. Or, you know, a, a six-legged woman in, in the Hindu religion. You know, maybe God has manifested himself in those ways. And, and so those people can believe in that stuff, and, you know, it's okay because that's how God intended it to be, and, you know, we can just be real complacent about it, and, and that's when we get in the trap. I'm here to tell you Oprah Winfrey is wrong, all right? There is not a universal God that has all people, and not all roads lead to God. There's one road, and there's one way, and that's Jesus Christ. Any other way ain't going to get you there. And so to be grounded upon our faith, what we have to believe in is this. Number one, we have to know that there is only one God. There is only one God. He is the one that created the heavens and the earth. He, he created you and I and everything that we can uh, touch, everything that we can see, everything we can uh, uh, smell, everything. He created it. one God. And how do we know that there's one God? It's because... His word tells us that there's one God. In Deuteronomy uh, chapter 6, verse 4, it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. So right here, here, here is God himself saying he is one. There's one God. Just one. And uh, 1 Corinthians 8, 4 says this, and it says, So then, about eating food and uh, food sacrificed to idols, we know that an idol is nothing. An idol is nothing at all in the world. And that there is no God but one. There is no God but one. There's only one God. And again in Galatians 3.20 it says this, A mediator, however, does not represent just one party, but God is one. And there, there's some other stuff that goes with each and every one of those verses, but the, the theme I want you to pick out there is that there is one God. Now, the one God that we serve, right, has made himself known in three different persons, Right? And this is what we call the Trinity. We, we serve a triune God. Um, 
You know, just this morning, we talked about how God will take some of the things and really uh, make people that are smart really dumbfounded, right? And so how do you make three into one? I, only God can. All right, God in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And the, the, one of the first times we see this actually take place in the New Testament, that is, is in Matthew chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, and it says, As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. And at that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God, that's the Holy Spirit, right, descending like a dove and lighting on him. So you have God, the Son, in the water being baptized. Why? Because he had to do it. He had to fulfill everything that was, was said he had to fulfill. He was walking in obedience to the word. And so he was baptized, and as he came up out of the water, the Holy Spirit, God's Holy Spirit descended on him. It was on him there. So you have God, the, the and or, here's the second part, and the voice from heaven said, this is my son whom I love. With him I'm well pleased. So now you got the voice of God, the Holy Spirit of God, and the Son of God all coming to met, all in one spot at one time. I wish we could have seen that. I, I can only imagine what that was like, having all three of them there at the same time. Now, you and I will, won't ever get to see this except when we get to heaven, right? But, hey, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be glorious. We can't compare it. We can't conceive it in our mind, but it, it's going to be something. But there's one God manifested in three persons. And so, in knowing that, let's look at God the Father. What is God the Father? What are, what are some things about God the Father? Well, in Exodus uh, 14, 31, it says this. And when the Israelites saw the great power the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and in Moses, his servant. Now, how many times have you ever been reading through the Bible, right? And all of a sudden, you, you, you're reading about these awesome things that God is doing for the Israelites when they're, when they're leaving Egypt, right? And... And it seems like as soon as God does something awesome, it, it's like the next page is the Israelites start doubting that God loves them, doubting that he has a plan for them, right? Does, have you followed that before, right? Now, it, did you ever ask yourself, well, man, if I, if I was there at that water and I saw the water split and walked across on dry land, there is no way I would ever doubt that God had a good plan for me. How many of you ever said that before? If God made bread fall out of the clouds called manna and fed me and all I had to do is wake up in the morning and go out and pick it up, I would truly believe that God loved me and he cared for me and he's got good plans for me. I would never doubt, right? Have you ever said that? Huh? Man. I've said it over and over again to my own self. Man. How are these Israelites, why did God put up with them so long? Why didn't he just say, hey, I'll, give me a new bunch of people. You know, you just, yeah, I'm just getting rid of all of you. You know, if I was God, I'd tell you what, yeah, I would do things differently, I think, you know. I'd start with Adam and Eve right when they messed up. I'd just get rid of them, start over. Y'all right, messed up, here we go. We're going to start all over again, see if we get this right. But I'm not God, and I thank God for that because I know I wouldn't be here. But all, who said, hey, man, Heather, did you say that? Okay. But all these things, you know, they, they doubt me. And, you know, we see God's great power each and every day. All creation cries out that there's a God. We can't drive down the road and see something that God has not created. His love and his, his mercy is all around us. We look to the cross. We look to what Jesus Christ has done. What, in Romans it says, this is how you know that God loves you, that he sent his own son to die on the cross for you. What other sign do you need, right? What other sign do you need that you can possibly have to say, you know what, God, if you would just do this, I would know that you love me. And he, he says this, I've already sent my son. Just look to the cross and know that I love you. And knowing that God loves us, he, he demonstrated his great power on the cross because he, he brought us in through that. John 14, 1, Jesus says, He said, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. 
trust in God, trust also in me. And this is Jesus just talking to his disciples, and, you know, things were about to happen in his life, and it was getting real, you know, I, I, I can only sense the, you know, the uneasiness in their life when, Jesus, when they was trying to understand what Jesus was talking about. But he says, listen, trust in God, trust also in me. Trust in God. So we've got to put our faith in God. The one God, the great I am. We sang songs about him all morning long. The great I am. The one and only. Matter of fact, when he said, when Moses goes, hey, who do I tell him who sent me? He says, you just tell him the I am. Tell him I am sent you. Listen, there is no other God but our God. There, and we cannot be moved on that. We cannot be shaken. That has to be... It has to be a faith, it has to be a belief in our life that there's only one God and that we're serving the one true God. Don't let anybody try to tell you something else. Muhammad is not the prophet of the Most High God. That's a, that's a, that's a lie and people are buying into that lie probably more rapidly than almost any other religion. And we're going to take a stand on it. We're not, that is not the truth. That is not the truth. I don't care if they say we're, our ancestors are, are tied to, to Abraham. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. There's one God. And there's one son. And that's the second thing that we have to believe in, that we have to put our faith in, and we have to put our trust in, is that Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the Messiah. He, he, he's, the Bible is true. Jesus came to earth and did what he said he was going to do. Okay? John 20, 31 says this. And he says, but, this, but these were written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. There's only one way that we can have eternal life, and that's in his name. And there's only one thing that really makes that sealed, and that's our, our, our faith and our believing that Jesus is the Christ. He's the Christ. He's the only Son of God. There will never be another Son of God as a matter of fact, the Bible says there's going to be many that's going to come in the last days, and they're going to say, hey, I am the Christ. It says don't pay any attention to them. Don't pay any attention to them. They're, they're, they're a liar. matter of fact, a couple of years ago at Acquire the Fire, we're, we're, we're going into the, the, the concert venue there, and off to the side there, these people were protesting. Y'all remember this? When it says, hey, you're not serving the right Jesus Christ. The, the real Jesus Christ is in Oklahoma City. Give me a break, right? Nothing good comes out of Oklahoma City. I'm just joking, if you're watching on the Internet. I happen to be from Oklahoma. I'm just joking. It meant something good coming out of Oklahoma City. They beat Alabama, right? That's good. Now I'll cover that so I can go on here. But it's going to continue happening. How many of you, of you are old enough to remember Waco? Hey, that was a big deal that went down. But it's not the only one. There, there's hundreds and hundreds of these false messiahs, these false prophets coming. And none of them, none of them are the truth. The truth is in the Bible. The truth is that Jesus Christ... God's Son has come. First John 5, 1 says this. It says, Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. So how do we know? Everyone that loves Jesus Christ is born of God. So if you love not the Jesus Christ of what might be taught today, but the Jesus Christ that's being taught out of the Word of God, right? This is the one we believe in. This is the one we put our trust in. This is the, where our faith comes from. It's not anything else. We've got to be grounded in that. And not only that, uh, I really like 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 3 through 11, because it really sums up what, uh, what we need to believe about Christ as well. Not only that he was born of a virgin, right? Not only did he live a sinless life, but he also did, also did this. It says, for what I received, I pass on to you, as, as first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to Scripture. You have to believe that. You have, if you're wondering why maybe your faith ain't working, have you believed that? Let's, let's start with point A. Have you believed that Christ really died for your sins? 
If you don't believe that Christ died for your sins, then you can, you can have faith in whatever you want to have faith in. It's not going to happen for you. You've got to believe that he died for your sins. Not only that, it says that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. Now, Romans 10, 9 also says that you just don't have to believe that he was on earth, but he also died and was raised again. So not only did he die, but then the Holy Spirit came in, into Christ's body and raised him from the dead, rolled the stone out of the way. And it said, and he appeared to Peter and the twelve. And it goes on to say that <clears throat> after that he appeared to more than, how many? Five hundred of the brothers at the same time. So now we got eyewitness accounts, not just of the twelve that we, we, we think about, but there's five hundred different people that saw Jesus Christ after he was risen from the dead. Now, why is that written? So that in order that we might believe that Christ is. Now, we'll go on to read here. <clears throat> then he appeared to James and to all the apostles. And last of all, he appeared to me also, and this is Paul, as to one abnormally born. For I am the... For I am the least of the apostles and do not even deserve to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. Now, I know that some of you have done some pretty bad things before, but I don't think we've ever really killed Christians yet. Have we? Have you, have you stoned one? Well, Paul did. He, he had him killed. He persecuted the church. It says, But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me is not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, Yet not I, but the grace of God that is within me. Whether then it is I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what you believed in. So what Paul preached, what I preached, what the apostle preached, is, is the very same thing about Jesus Christ, that he came, that he lived, that he died, and that he's alive again. His blood has covered your sin. If you believe in, you have faith in him, you'll have eternal life. Guys, that, that's a truth. That's a faith that cannot be shaken. We cannot waver on that. There, there, there's no other avenue. You can't work hard enough. I know faith says uh, faith without works is dead, right? You can't come to church enough. You can't, you can't give enough. You can't be good enough. You can't feed me enough to ever gain your way into heaven. There's only one way, and that's through Jesus Christ. You've got to be grounded and founded a, a solid foundation on that. Why? Because there's going to be some crafty people. And you know what? I've already read some really crafty stuff that have, has deceived many people into believing what they want to believe. But we can't believe what we want to believe. We got to, no, I'll get to that in just a second. But the third thing is not only do we believe in Jesus Christ, but we also have to believe and have faith in the Holy Spirit. In the Holy Spirit. God's Holy Spirit with us. Um, John 14, 16 through 7, Jesus says this, and he says, I'll ask the Father, and he'll give you another counselor to be with you forever. Who's with us right now? Who is with us in this very place? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Who leads us and who guides us each and every day? The Holy Spirit. Now, Jesus just didn't say this to be saying it. If, if he said it, then I, I think we can take him at his word, can't we? Yes, we can. It said, the spirit of truth, the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. So, where does the Holy Spirit live? Right here. That's why the Bible calls us the temple of the Holy Spirit. you got to understand that, that we are his temple. The Holy Spirit lives in us. I'm telling you what, when you go back to John chapter 17, and that prayer solidifies what I'm talking about. Guys, the Holy Spirit is alive. And he, he's here today. He, he just didn't come and pass by. There's a lot of people who say the Holy Spirit isn't alive. He's not working today. He is. He is. And if you don't believe that about the Holy Spirit, then you don't have a good foundation. You, you're, you're believing something else. If you don't believe the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God, then you're standing on some other ground that's, that's shaking and that's moving and you're not standing on the firm foundation. Matter of fact, you're believing a false doctrine. And you need to get back on track. And you need to understand who exactly we belong to. 
and who exactly should be in charge of our life. That's why when we sin and we mess up, there should be something inside of us, right, that's going, hey, that's not right. But how many of us still sin and mess up? Amen. Amen. But thank God he gives us the Holy Spirit so we can ask repentance and get back in step with him. Amen. So we got to believe in the Holy Spirit. The last thing is this. There, there's three things that we, we got to stand firm on. And the last one is this. And guys, this one hits home. This, this hits our community. We have to believe the Holy Scriptures. We have to believe in the Bible, the, what God has, ha, has left us to know him. Isn't it important about what we believe? Absolutely. If it's in here, if it's in one of these 66 books that we got right here, from Genesis to Revelation, then it's truth. It's not fable. It's not fiction. It's not some kind of wise tale that someone made up. This is the truth, the solid word of God. And everything that's written inside this is, is, is true. There's nothing that's not. But yet, here we are, last year, 2013, um, having one particular denomination break off and start saying, well, the first five books of, this, of the Bible are not really accurate. They're not really true. It's just some kind of myth. And it has already caused division in this town. If we cannot stand on the entire word of God, then we don't need to stand on any of it. If one part of this is wrong, then it's all wrong. If, this, if we don't believe that this is truth, if we don't believe that this is the inherent word of God, and all we're doing is having a good time, just in a different way, a respectable way, so to speak, in vain. That's right. That's right. Second Timothy three fourteen through seventeen says this, and it says, "But as for you, continue in what you have learned and what, and have become convinced of, because you know that from who you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ." Once again, you can't just get around what I'm talking about here without having Jesus all in it, right? All scripture is God-breathed. How much? Genesis to Revelation, right? All of it is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. We can't believe anything else. If we continue to build on that foundation and stay within those four truths, believing in the word of God, the whole word of God, or like the court says, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, right? We believe in that. We believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, and everything that the word of God says about them to be true, then our faith, what we learned about last week will be strong, it will be effective, and it will be uh, uh, something that will lead us and guide us, and um, I believe it will be that mountain-moving thing. But we've got to stay grounded upon the Word of God in those four truths. Amen? We have to. 
It's a must. It's not, it's not an option. It's not an option. If you can't agree with those four things that I, I spoke on this morning, if you can't believe that we're serving one God, if you don't believe in his son, Jesus Christ, you don't believe in his spirit, his Holy Spirit that's with us, and if you don't believe that the, 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 the word of God is what it is, it's the whole truth and nothing but the truth, then this is probably not the place for you. I mean, I don't know how more nice I could say that. But we're going to preach and we're going to believe those four things. And we will not stray from the truth. And our faith will grow because of those four things. Amen. So we have to pursue righteousness. Right? We have to pursue faith. Amen. And after, after all that, next week we're going to learn and we're going to talk about pursuing love. And love is, is, is one of those things that I, I think sometimes we uh, we don't walk in near enough, near enough. Amen. Or oh me, yeah. To well, let's bow our heads and we'll pray. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for your your word today, God. Thank you for God just making this truth. God, that you solidified this morning our faith, our faith in you, our faith in your Son, Jesus Christ, our faith in the Holy Spirit, and our faith in the Word of God. Our faith in these four things, God, will make us built upon that rock that when the storms come, we'll be able to withstand. Father, I pray now that as we, uh, as we go from here, that God, those, those, those truths just become more and more real to us each and every day that we continue to stand firm upon them and not be wa- not, not, not waver, not move from those four truths. Holy Spirit, lead us, guide us, and direct us each and every day and deal with us as you see fit. Now this morning, If you haven't believed, but this morning the Holy Spirit has drawn you here, and today you want to say, hey, not only do I I believe that God is the one true God, but I need to believe in what, and I just need to confess about what Christ has done. I believe that Jesus is the Christ, that he he lived and he died. He lived a sinless life. He died and he's alive forevermore. He's alive today. He's making intercession for me today. If you've never trusted in Jesus Christ for your salvation, if you've never put your faith in the blood that was shed for you, but today, for some reason, it's not for some reason, it's the Holy Spirit working in you saying, hey, you just need to confess it with your mouth. You need to take the next step. If that's you this morning, would you simply raise your hand? Anyone here? Amen. Well, Father, I, I just thank you so much that we're yours. I believe that God, we're walking in your ways. So, Father, I ask now that as we get ready to leave, that God, you continue to unite us, you continue to mold us and equip us. But Father, you you you, uh, you bind us together with your love. Lord, we ask, too, that as we get ready to eat this meal, God, you just bless this meal for our body and our body to your service. Father, just help us be your light, your salt, your example to a lost and hurting world. We just pray this in Jesus' name.